In the first place, scientific temper is not an academic matter. Scientific temper is in some ways a basic feature of our being human. So I think scientific temper is accepting facts based on evidence. Science is evidence based and that evidence has to be statistically significant. The temper development happens when you start rationalizing things and you actually build a, a uh, like a, in an impartial or unbiased way your opinion and uh, and that when get tested and whatever the answer you get and you build further on that for me that is what me is scientific time. This is not about learning a technique science is about asking question and finding logical and reasonable answers by applying variety of methods and which includes these technologies using modern technologies. So modern technologies alone cannot give you a good answer until or unless you have a very good question in the very first place. So the thing to think about is not whether we should have scientific temper or not. We do. You don't cross the road without looking. Why? Because you know what might happen. Farmers, you think anybody in dryland agriculture in the peninsula of India will plant uh, their crops in April, even if some astrologer tells them to do that? Why not? Because they know. So we tend to behave in our ordinary everyday life as scientific temper shows us the paths to behave. So the question to ask is, why don't we have scientific temper? We do. The question to ask is, why do we abandon scientific temper in the specific instances and cases where we do that? People just don't realize that uh, it's there in all of us. They think that only some people are cut out to be scientists. That's not true. I think everybody can. It's just that one needs the encouragement and the support um, from the people around you, uh, which then allows you to grow as a scientist. I think once you get that support and the encouragement, uh, one gains confidence and you know that you, know you can ask uh, questions. So it need not be a person from science, I mean maybe a person from uh, arts, maybe a person from a commerce background, maybe a person from an economics background. If they are observant, they all are doing science. Scientific temperament doesn't really happen so overnight. It, it, it is actually a, uh, the way you born and brought up. You know, it, it, I don't, I don't, I am not saying that it, it comes, it, it is like, like, like music or like any other hobby that people are born with. So I am not saying that it is, people are born with tempers, but it is, it's a development over the period of time, at least while you are doing your uh, undergraduation or post-graduation or even before that of course, that if you are curious, if you are not afraid of asking questions to yourself, of course to others too, but to yourself, and when you ask question to yourself, how do you answer those questions? That is a scientific temperament. Scientific question is asking questions. That is the most important thing in research, asking questions. If your question is interesting, your answer will be interesting. A person with scientific temperament will, will, will have sort of a satisfaction with himself or herself that um, uh, they can raise questions and they can find answers. So for me the scientific temper means it's a rationalization. So you actually rationalize something and uh, and based on that whatever the answer you get that is what build you build on science. Only when we observe the curiosity can be generated. So if a person is not observant, if they are not able to notice the things in their life forms. I mean, like from simple example, boiling water, why boiling water is different than to the boiling of a milk. I mean, milk froths out, but the water does not froth out. Uh, both have different boiling points as well. So many things from daily life to very complex life, uh, life situations. I mean, there are n number of things that we observe. 
So if those observations are not getting remotely recorded in our mind and if those are not going to make us curious and if they are not going to make us ask two important questions how and why I do not have a scientific temper. So according to me anyone who is observant enough has a, holds a great scientific temper. I think scientific temper is being open to new discoveries, new findings, new data so that you uh, whenever you get new data you should be prepared to accept it in spite of the fact that they don't agree with your long-held beliefs or your favorite books or your uh, favorite um, let me not get into a religion but something some diktats that we have they will change it and therefore uh, in science unlike uh, probably more than other areas our textbooks get uh, you know have to be revised very fast because every day there is addition to knowledge so what i am telling you about hydra today tomorrow it may not exist that doesn't mean i am lying today that means that I am open to, that is the scientific method, open to correction, which is often not there in many of the uh, human activities, that we are not open to correction. Um, but the main thing is, uh, don't stop questioning, stay curious and don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to be wrong. I've got an itch I can't scratch, I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me, an open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round, welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly, thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive.